I for the fir- I've had my car. Oh, by the way, I saw you get your extra back. Um, I saw. Has it been that long? Yeah, I don't think. See the dent in the back. Yeah. I know, <laughs> oh yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. My niece did that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it wasn't. Wasn't your nephew the one that follows? Oh, us? Hayden. Um, Caden. <laughs> you gee- forgot his name. <laughs> Caden. Jeez, Caden the absolute peanut. <laughs> Caden got a car. Watch out. Hang on. He's, I'm sure he put a photo up on here. I'm not going to put this up, Caden, so just calm down. Mm. Look what this peanut just bought. Oh, gosh. Oh, my God. What's he going to do with that thing? <laughs> Caden just bought himself a... Is that a Hilux? I don't even know. Well, it's a... Uh uh, I don't know, mate. I can't even see. I, was, I question those white shoes you got on there, Caden. Anyway. Yeah, all black with the white shoes. Yeah, nice. Anyone driving around Northam, just watch out because you've got an absolute peanut on the road now. That's what the P plate stands yeah, for. Yeah, P for peanut. <laughs> God, that thing comes anywhere near my house, Caden. We're going to have a problem. <laughs> Not because of the car, but because of Caden. <laughs> because of you, Caden. Oh, remember last time we played basketball? Yeah, dominated. <laughs> now, nah, good on you, Caden. He's a good. He's a, actually a good, a good kid. Oh, good on him. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good parents. It's good. <laughs> um, what were we talking about? Shit, uh, <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, what were we talking about? We had the RC cars. It was cold. I don't know. Probably. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was cold. Yeah. Well, for the first time ever, my car. Like I've had my car for years since yeah. I was like sixteen. For the first time ever, it gave me a warning that it was so cold outside. Really? Yeah, the car warned me. It, like, flashed with, like, a message. I had no idea my car could do that. Well, it just says extra cold outside. Yeah, it said low temperatures outside. And then it just kept say, flashing I three degrees. I was like, <laughs> yeah, how do you think I got in the car? Like, <laughs> sleep in here. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Anyway. What else? We got anything else? It's been a while. Yeah, I haven't seen you in ages. I've I missed know. this place. It's I been know. good. And the, you got the belt now. Oh, man. That this, actually this makes thing. me sick. I love it. This is so good. I'll tell you this. I'll tell you the story. I wasn't going to, but I'll tell you the story behind that belt. Okay. Right. It. Um. Someone was selling that belt very cheap, mm. like cheaper than I thought they should be. Came up on marketplace of all places, and um, I've said to my brother, "Is because it was just near his house." Remember, I message Alex and asked him to pick it up. Yeah. 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 And no, don't ever rely on Alex for anything. <laughs> So I called my brother and said, there's this, there's this thing, can you pick up, it's near your house. He goes, yep, no dramas, he's pretty good for it. So he went and got it. And I said to him, what was the guy like you bought it off? Because I thought if it's if it's hot, if it's something like that, I don't want to know about I don't want to touch anything that's not legit. Yep. So he goes, oh, he's an old boy. And I said, like an old boy? Yeah. He goes, yeah, he's an older guy. And I said, what the hell is he doing with the UFC belt? Yep. And he goes... And I did feel a little bit bad for this guy because of this. He goes, oh, it's actually my son's belt. Mm. Oh, no. He's away. I think he might have been short on some change. Mm. So he's gone, grab a couple of things around my room and sell them and send me the money. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. So the first thing he's done is picked up the UFC belt. Oh, crap. I know. I I feel a little bit bad. And the velvet. And the velvet cover, yep. I know, which is pretty good. I think I ripped that the other day. Yeah. Anyway, um, if I was thinking about it, if this guy comes back and says, "Listen, this happened with my old man," I'd, I'd, I would, I'd, get, I'd have to sell it back to him. Yeah, as long as you sell it back, yeah. I'm going to give it to him. I'll give it to him what I paid for it because that's it. You can't get. I think that's a 19. What's the date on the back of it? Is it 20? Sorry, 2010. Um, what have we got here? Should say at the top top line. Twenty ten. Yeah. Twenty ten. So that in itself is thirteen years old, and yeah. the UFC haven't been going that long. Nah. What? Nineteen ninety seven. I think. Is it? Yeah, about that. Maybe. Nah. Wait. Am I wrong on no, that? I, think it was I feel like I should know that. Let me fact check myself. I think it was. No, I'm going to go ninety seven because I I was living in Frio. I remember when I saw the first VHS of UFC one. One of my mates Ooh. brought it over. I know. Oh yeah. Damn. Back in the day. What year did UFC kick off? Let's find out. Ninety. I'm going to go. Ninety three. Ninety three. Yeah. Jeez. Damn, we were far off. What are you UFC one. What a classic, hey? It was different back then. Oh, Remember, soccer kicks it used to be discipline versus discipline. No, no gloves. <laughs> no, glove. nothing except or, um, um, what's the name? We wore, wore one glove. One glove. Oh, what was his name? Uh, oh, I can't remember. Why would you do that? Yeah. Anyway. anyway. That, was, that was the day jiu-jitsu really, really took a turn for the better. Did, do you reckon Cron Gracie 
killed jujitsu, BJJ. God, dude, what a clown! What an absolute clown that guy is. Mm. Yeah, it's just, it's just like, what are you doing with? Like, you're a Gracie. You mm. should kind of hold that with some pride. Yeah, but like, you're in the UFC. You're doing MMA. Like, you need to have a basic understanding of striking and takedowns. Don't, mm. don't just pull guard. You no. know, especially against Charles Jordan. Mm. Like, that's the last person you want to do that against because yeah. he's not going to fall for it. You no. know. I don't know. It was just such a joke. It was, I, I felt embarrassed. Like It was pretty bad. It just it sort of it ruined the Gracie name a little bit, yeah. didn't it? And just for the martial art of jiu-jitsu, you know, there's the like I love it. I love it so much. There's this, you know, the meme of like um you know, you're in a street fight, you get in a street fight with someone and then they lay on their back, you know? Like instead <laughs> of like fighting. fighting. It's like he actually did that. Like he did. It looks so bad for us. Oh, That's fine. All right, should we get into this? We got, we're yeah. going to try to scan over two cards. Awesome. We're a chance. We're a chance. All I right. got time. This weekend, you have UFC uh, in Las Vegas. What UFC fight night something or other? What do you reckon? 48 or something? Oh. It's got to be more than that, doesn't I've, it? I've stopped counting. Whatever it is, hang on. Let's have a look here. Have, have you noticed a lot of people talking about how horrible the cards have been the last couple of months? But it's like, I don't know. I feel like if you actually watch them... You'll be entertained. They're good fights. They're not bad fights. I know the cards, like, name-wise aren't that great. Yeah. But the qu- the f- actual fights themselves have been fine. They've been good. Like, it's it's strange. People kind of complain about whatever they want. They do <laughs> want... Reason. I think we get a taste for a, a juicy card. Like, mm. for example, um, 290, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. That is... Um, That's going to be good. Oh, did Zulgas lose again? Yeah. Yeah, he's going to get cut, I reckon. <sighs> Split decision as well. But this time it wasn't a robbery. <laughs> he actually <laughs> lost. How's his hair? Oh, the fatty pimlet. I was all superstitious. I was like, now that he's cut his hair, he'll win. Yeah. He didn't. <laughs> I tip him every single week. Yeah. Every week. And he just breaks my heart. How good was Macy Barber against Rebus? Wasn't expecting that. I, I thought Rebus was going to get it done. Because Macy Barber's last couple of fights, she's looked horrible. She looked so confident. Yep. yep. They just, that, that's what the female division needs. Whereas Macy Barber, I don't think, I definitely don't think she's a contender, especially in the flyweight. But putting on fights like that does so much for the um, for the women's uh, flyweight division, or just the women's MMA. Yep, just finishes. Did you watch um, Trevor Peake's fight? No, with, when did he with fight? Chepe? No, <laughs> it's Jose Maracal. Yeah, and Trevor Peake. That was. For, I don't even think. I don't even think they got the bonus. But that was fight of the night. Really? By far, it wasn't even close. Like, they, like, that was an incredible fight. And it was um, Jose's debut. Okay. So, he's gone up against Trevor Peake, who's, like, obviously... Decent. Um, yeah, he's, he's like, he's a good striker. He's just entertaining, but he was this prospect that everyone loved. And Chepe's gone in there, and you could just tell... Because he had over 20 amateur fights, Chepe, and he trains with Justin Gaethje. He's at a good gym. Yeah. And you could tell, man. Like, he was incredible. I, I could not stop watching that fight. Really? Like, oh, it's amazing. I didn't get to see any of the um, of the prelims because they started at about well, like they started, 11.30 our time yeah. on Saturday night. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I got the main card, though. I did have a watch of that. Yeah. That was pretty good. And then I poke against Taffer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was that was ridiculous. You know what else ridiculous? Tell me. Cody Brundage. What, like, I am never tipping this dude again, man. Jeez. He has all the tools. He has all, all the tools at his disposal to win, right? Especially against, <coughs> and the, I can't even say that name. Sequiz Dumas. Yeah. He had all the tools, and he just did not use any of them. It's like, oh, I'm done with him. Is it no a confidence more. thing, you reckon? I don't care. <laughs> Cut him. <laughs> <laughs> he does look, where is he, Cody, here? Where is he? Oh, he's American. I didn't think he was. Mm. He, um, he's a big boy. Yeah, he's huge. What he just didn't want to fight. He's a wrestler, and he, he just didn't use his wrestling against someone with very suspect takedown defense. Like Jesus. Dumas, I think in the fight before that, yeah, he got t- taken down a lot. So, oh, what do you reckon? Okay, I'm going to say something about one of the judges here. Mm. What do you think about the main event? Yeah, look, it uh, was a beating. Yeah. I think a lot of it's easy to look back now and go he should have stopped it at the end of the fourth. Mm. But no, he still had his wits about him. His face looked pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. That was not a ten-seven round. I didn't think so. That round was, four. That, that was our mate Chris Lee. Hey, Chris Lee. My God, someone needs to do something about this guy. <laughs> How bad? It's, it's gotten so bad. Chris Lee in the building. <laughs> 
That's still funny. It's great. Still, it's how, so good. That he's got, he can live off that for the rest of his career. That one call. <laughs> Alec? Yeah. Oh, what do you mean his career? <laughs> Could you imagine? Could yeah. You, oh, um, go, yeah, you know, obviously we're confirmed for uh, October 7th. Yep. So, CJ. Oh, how good is oh, CJ? Love CJ. No more. We can't We can't try to better that. We can't try to go in there and start having to go at the judges. Oh, or yeah, anything. of course right. not. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> Grizzly in the building. <laughs> I thought it was um, when that fight happened that we were commentating. Yeah. Um, I forget their names. The blonde dude with the mullet. Alex Wright. Yeah, Alex Wright. Um, so uh, when we were doing that, your initial reaction of just like being speechless when they called, I didn't, it, I couldn't believe. I it. was like, oh, I don't know if, if like Glenn and that are going to like this. <laughs> and then Alex said that. <laughs> I was like, okay, we've got to commit to it now. <laughs> you were so professional. You go raise the thin decision yeah. there. <laughs> I. I think it was because I watched the fight and then I lo- and I thought, nah, because I've done this before and then I've watched it back on the video and I've decided against it. Yep. I think it was a lot closer when I watched it back. Yeah. But anyway, it's done. The um, I've seen some of the possible fighters for this upcoming one. Cool. And oh yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. There's some good fighters coming oh, yeah. up. So October seven, everyone, Crown Grand Ballroom, Perth Cobra Rumble. You'll see us there commentating <laughs> again. Three of us. Whole, oh, I'm whole so event. excited you're back. We're back. Thank God. We're back. Should we get into this card? Yeah, let's do yeah, it. we've been going, oh, jeez, we've been going a while. Okay, this weekend, UFC, God knows what it is, fight night. Sean Strickland against Magomedov. Mm. Firstly, before we kick off, did you see who got released by the UFC? Broke my heart. I've even messaged him to say that I'm, uh, it broke my heart. Uh, no, I'm not sure. Ghost Pepper. Eric Gonzalez. Oh, yeah, that was a couple of weeks ago. Oh. Listen, Brad. No, I, know, I know you no. love his nickname. The Ghost Pepper. He was one of my favourites. <laughs> he really was, and I can't believe he, he's, he's off. I did message him. <laughs> see if he, see, oh, I did. Let's see if he I guess, uh, I guess it's the equivalent of like Sam Alvey being your favourite fighter or something, you know? Like I think there could be a bit of a curse here. If I'm messaging these people, mm. they suddenly get cut. They go on a losing streak. <laughs> think about it. We, we jumped on... Um, we jumped on Sam Alvey. Mm. Oh, who's who's messaging me back? The Ghost Pepper. Oh, yes. oh, here we go. Ghost Pepper said, thank you for your support. Uh, we'll be back, no doubt. Thanks, Ghost Pepper. That's Eric Gonzalez. Thanks for getting oh, back to me. God That's damn. great work. When did you do that? No, I, th- I did that about half hour ago. Sorry, mate. We were gas bagging. That's all right. All right. Uh, let's go into the UFC. These Obviously, the new rankings haven't come in yet. I didn't realize Ilya Tapura was ranked nine. Mm, yeah. And he's calling out Volk. Yeah. It's a, it's pretty laughable, to be honest. There's like a bunch of fights he should probably take. Ah, oh, it's a heap in there. Yeah. So, I mean, he did. I think I think it's over for Josh Emmett. Yeah, no, he's not coming back. I don't think he can come. I think he'll always be a good fighter, but mm. I don't think he can really be respected after losing because he lost convincingly to Yar. Yeah, um, and then and now convincingly to that him. was yeah. that was absolute domination. He had nothing. Yeah, I think it's very similar to a Tony Ferguson where. He went up against Justin Gaethje, and it was uh, it was horrible. Like, took so much damage, and then the next fight got dominated again. I think same thing with Josh Emmett. Like, he's on his yeah, way. Yeah, did something to him mentally. He just doesn't look like himself out there, you know. He doesn't look good, does he? That was not ten seven. No, it that was. round I, I, was not a ten seven. Yeah, yeah. I, you know what? I could possibly agree with even a ten eight. I'm not yeah. too sure yeah. because. Um, uh, Josh Emma still did land some punches and he was cut the first yeah. two, three minutes. I'd have to go back and watch it again, but when I was watching it, I didn't think it was a uh, 10-7. No. Point. You no, know how what? rare it is to get a 10-7? Jesus. Chris Lee. Chris Lee was in the Chris building. Lee. Did you see the, the stat of Josh Lee is the one and only fighter to score a 10-7 and also be on the receiving end of a 10-7? Who's that? Josh Emmett. Oh, really? Yeah. Who did he get a 10-7 against? No, I don't remember. It was Some old hack. Really? Yeah. That's not, I like that stat. Yeah. Do you know who... You're welcome. Do you know who the pound-for-pound pound female is on top? Uh, oh, uh, no. Who is it? It's not up there. That's why I didn't scroll down. Oh. Have a guess uh, who the pound-for-pound the pound female fighter is currently. It... I... Oh, it, Sure, surely Shevchenko, right? No, no, no. Grasso, Grasso. Oh God! Pound for pound, champ is Grasso. Shevchenko second. Whaley Zhang third. Rose four. Mm. That 
that is ridiculous. That is not great. Like, I understand Grasso beat Shevchenko for the belt, but, like, Shevchenko Come was on. there for so long. I don't know. You can't, although you can't have a, a, a someone who's beaten you rank below you, mm. especially if it's for the title. Yeah. Surely. Yeah. Surely. And who's got, okay, Bantamweight, I think I'm pretty sure the flyweight division is gone. Um, Featherweight division is gone. Yeah. It's got to be gone. It's, it's, not, even, it's not there. Not anymore, even there. Yeah. She only had one fighter there. Yeah. Who do you reckon is going to fight for the Bantamweight Championship? <clears throat> It'll have to be Juliana. Yeah. Do you know Juliana hasn't fought anyone in the top 15? Yeah, I saw this. That's so dodgy, man. <laughs> it goes to show the state of women's MMA. But, um, yeah, so Pena. Um, oh, I don't know. I, I know that she, that like Pennington was on, like got considered. Yeah. But, oh, God. I reckon, I think, when is this fight happening? This fight's happening in about two weeks, three weeks. Mm. You've got... Yeah, I think um, you're going to be right on this. Buona Silva versus Holly Holm. I reckon Holly Holm's going to get the win. Yep. If she can finish it very quickly, I reckon she's going to have Pena in December for the title. She won't finish it quickly, though. There's no way. Not with Buona Silva. Who's she fought? What's she on? Jesus. What good. is Man Oh, she lost a man on. Okay. Oh, she dropped down. Okay. But quite a few people have lost a man on, haven't they? Manon is a very good fighter. Oh, wait. She's got a fight coming up as well. Um, oh. Manon. Manon, yeah. Really? I yeah, didn't see I, I that. I only got, um, uh, what's it called, the what, other day. What, Chikagian? No? Pretty sure. Yeah, it was No, she Chikagian. beat Chikagian. There's nothing in here? Oh, I thought I saw there was like something in the works. Let's have a quick look. Yeah. Oh, Jessica Untrush. Oh, no, it was Rose. Rose Namajunas. No, When's yeah. that? Okay. That'll be good. That'll be good. Jeez, sick. Rose has got to get this win. Yeah. That's a tough Gig for Rose. Manon's good. She's very good. She's very, I'm very good. For Rose. All right. Should we get into this card? Yeah. We've said that four times. Now. Okay. <laughs> first off, with this card, the first fight of the night here is Alexander Romanov versus mm. Blagoy Ivanov. That is just doing Blagovoy Ivanov. Mm. How do you say his first name? Blagoy. 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 Yeah. Blagoy. He. I mean, he's definitely not an exciting fighter. But his record, to be opening the prelims yeah. on a fight night, I mean, well, who's he's lost to? Junior? Yeah, he's lost to a few. But he's beaten Tai Tuivasa, Ben, ben Ross. Well. Like, he's a good fighter. Yeah. And to kick off with a heavyweight. But also, Romanov. He was pretty good as well, wasn't he? Romanov. If it's the person I'm thinking of. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Let's have a look at Romanov. See? He's got wins over... Oh, yeah. What the hell? I don't know. I feel like I feel like, Ro- like this is a dis- this is a injustice to Romanov more than it is for Ivanov. both of them yeah. to, to kick off the prelims with a heavyweight as well. Yeah, interesting. I don't know why they're doing that. I, I'd be. I reckon that they're tough done by them. Yeah. Okay. Next up, we have. Uh, oh, this is just a couple in here. So this okay. This girl here, Ivana uh, Petrovic. Mm. Uh, check out that belt. That's sick. It's a massive belt. Mm. Looks like a bit of a kid's one, though. If this girl hasn't got USADA, um, <laughs> in, in, like, yeah, this girl's going to have some dramas, I reckon, later on. She's looking a little bit too jacked. Now, there is an Ivana Petrovic that I, I did have a look at. Check out this one. You just reminded me of something as well. I'll okay, when nothing. I first searched up uh, Ivana Petrovic, I got this lady <laughs> from Nova TV. Look at the fringe. Oh. Look at the hairline oh. on her. She doesn't look real. My God. Jesus. How old would she be? Alex so jealous. <laughs> she's the kind of girl to say, yeah, I'm 40 or I'm 80. <laughs> she's That hairdo that she's rocking there, that's where she's like, she's had always had like long hair and then she's like in year 10 or something at school and she goes, no, I'm going to cut a fringe. This is back in the 50s. And she's going, yeah, I like this hairdo. I'm going to run with it forever for the, for the rest of my life until fringes come back in. That is a sharp fringe, yeah. isn't it? She's been through all the trends, but she stuck with the fringe. Oh, how much look at that. Vaseline on the lens there. Jesus. Oh, look at her. You know what? She would just constantly be in a bad mood, wouldn't she? She would be the kind of lady you come home oh. and she would just nag and she'd give you the silent treatment 
and she just would she just never be. Is there any photos of her showing her teeth? None, because she's always frowning. Mm. Oh, jeez, that is. There really is no photos of her smiling. There's no. That's her there. I bet you she's complaining about something. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you she's unhappy with the state of something. Mm. She'd stick that microphone right in your face and ask for a comment, wouldn't she? Oh, my God. And you would you would respond. I would respond would, um, anything. Oh, she's going hard on the lipstick as you, well. You reminded me with the when you mentioned USADA. Uh, Connor apparently didn't get his sample in in time. No. So now he can't fight in 2023. What did I say? I said... You didn't make is, call. I, I said it before the USADA stuff came out. As soon as the Ultimate Fight Episode 1 came out, I messaged our group chat mm. and I said, this Michael Chandler and Connor, I don't think it's going to happen. I, I can't believe they're not making it happen. There must yeah. have been some deal going on. Do you think... Tell me. Since you're like... This is your area of expertise. Oh, controversy. Controversy. Theory. Okay, yeah, I'm in and this. I'm in this. Yeah. Do you think it's got to do with the Francis to PFL thing that they're like pulling out Connor and like using his name quite a bit now? To sort of PFL. keep people and get new people in, losing Francis. I mean, that was like a pretty big deal. Uh, I think. Or like, what else could it be? I don't think we're going to actually see Francis fight uh, in MMA for a long time. Mm. I reckon he's going to do boxing. I reckon it'd be eighteen months or something before. Yeah. I don't think Francis. I don't think his name is big enough to hold out for that long. Yeah. I think he's going to become a bit of a, a, a bit of a joke. Yeah. Um, so you reckon the UFC are doing whatever they can to stay? Yeah. You know, and now they've got like, they're doing the BMF thing again. Oh, what? So, that so is you've criminal. Got Connor and Michael, which won't happen. Then you've got the BMF title happening again. Who's that? That's Gaethje and, um, uh, Poirier. Poirier, yeah. yeah. Um, and oh, Poirier's was... got all these belts, but none of them mean a thing, do they? <laughs> the that poor guy. <laughs> He, Two does, interim he belt. doesn't have a belt like ours. No, right? this is the belt you want. Um, there was a third thing as well. Uh, I've lost it, but it'll it'll come back to me. Yeah, they've got like these. Oh, and then also the Zuckerberg and oh <laughs> Zuckerberg. Thing. That will not happen. No, it won't. But like Dane is talking about it, and it's like, why are all these gimmicky things happening right now? You know, like I don't know. I don't know. I but yeah, Connor and Michael. That fight won't happen. Guarantee it. Ever, ever. I don't think. I don't think Connor ever intends to come back to fight. I think he's getting paid to act like he's going to like come back and fight and keep the UFC relevant. And then when they, like, they interview him um, with things for like Francis, when they ask Connor, like, what do you think about the deal? He's, he always says, like, I think it's a good deal for Francis, but who's he going to fight? There's no one in the PFL. And then he just trashes the PFL, which, fair enough, UFC is better in my opinion. But, mm. like... Why is he doing that? You know, he he's not approaching it in the sense of just being an athlete. He's like approaching it with the agenda that PFL is absolute shite. Even though Connor never fights, mm. I don't know. I just feel like there's something going on, and this whole tough thing is all bullshit. And we're for, we're we're taking it. We're taking the bait. We are. Yeah. We're drinking the we're drinking the Kool Aid. We're drinking the Kool Aid. Drinking as Kool-Aid. the kids would say, we're drinking the Kool Aid. I, th- uh, I think Connor is. We're being cooked. We have. <laughs> we are being cooked. I think Connor is one event away from losing all respect. And like, I think if if something happens, like if he, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he got mouthy while he's out drinking and then got dropped by someone. You don't remember BJ Penn that happened to? Yeah, him. that happened to him a bunch. <laughs> like, yeah, I think. He is he's on the verge. He's got to do something. He yeah. he's been running this, these these promises and these you know oh, this is going to happen, but it never does happen. Never. I think he's been running it for just too long now. I agree. So I, I don't know what he's going to do. Mm. I, he's got to do something. He has to fight. Yeah. But if he came back because there was I know there was talk of him versus um, Charles Oliveira. Mm. He's not going to fight Islam. I don't no, think. No, Ch- and Charles would maul Connor. I think he would too. Yeah. Um, but how's he? That's the other thing. How the hell is Connor get down? Going to get down to lightweight now? Yeah. Oh, he's got no chance. There's no way. He is so juiced up. Like he, it, you watch, eyeballs. you watch the Ultimate Fighter, and you're like, Nah, dude. Like that's not. That does not. That's look not like the same guy. Pure muscle. Like. <laughs> His only other chance would be. I mean, I would. I think he's a better chance against Leon. I like Leon Edwards. I think Connor's yeah. a better chance of Leon Edwards against Islam. 
I agree. <sighs> I think Kamara. I think I think Connor's a chance. It depends because think it's been that long since we've seen. Since we've, when was the last time we saw a good Connor? Well, Cowboy. Cowboy, but even then, was that good Connor or was just Con- was no, Cowboy really old and just, just not- done Cowboy? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I like his chances against Leon uh, over Kamara or Colby or yeah. Bilal. Yeah. Oh, maybe Bilal. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's it. I, I feel like Connor wouldn't entertain Bilal just because no. he's not a big name. But I think Connor would be terrified of, fo- of fighting Hamza. Mm. Yeah. You could do Connor and Thompson. <laughs> that'd be that'd be a little fun one. I think he wants to either fight for the belt or fight for yeah. the contender for the, the belt. This is what I mean. I just think Connor is is cashing in on his name now. He's not going to come back. He's just cashing in on his name. And that's why he does things like BKFC jumps in the ring with Mike Perry and does a stare down, you know? Mm. Like, like why are you doing that? Oh, it's because you're Conor McGregor. It's because you have that name. Like, he has no intention of doing any of these things or going to any of these places, but he knows people love it and he's going to get money off of it. So, I don't know. I think Connor's, yeah, I think you're right. Connor's fighting days. But then again, he could turn up. Mm. And as much as I hate to say it, if someone said to me, take a dive. Mm. Yeah. He you could would do fight. it. He could fight. Yeah. You could just say to um, Oliveira, take yeah. a dive. Yeah. If they give him millions. Yeah. Mm. You would. So five mil, take a dive. Oh, I would play it off yeah. so well. He would. Th- I'd actually let him knock me out. Mm. I'd just, well, he probably would anyway, so he yeah. wouldn't need to pay me five million. <laughs> Oh, what do we got here? What did I put that link into? Oh, that was just that lady's uh, savage haircut. Are we even talking about this card? I don't know. Let's get into the... Let's what, get into Kevin, what Kevin Lee. Yeah. Like, oh, and also, mid... I think this is hard done by... Yeah, right in the middle of the prelims, we've got um, Yana, uh, Yana Santos, former Yana Kuntanaiska. Oh, that's her. Yeah, against Carla Rosa. Uh, Yana's six, ranked six and Rosa's nine. And they're mid prelims, yeah, and they're both semi decent fighters. That's a bit harsh. That's rough. Yeah, that is a rough gig. Yeah. All right, last one. I think Kevin Lee's still on the prelims, isn't he? Yeah, I'm he is sure, main yeah. prelim. I didn't like Kevin Lee for one reason. Everyone knows because uh, of what he did to the gift, Greg Gillespie. Now I prefer Kevin Lee. <laughs> I actually like Kevin gift. Lee. Yeah. Kevin Lee returned to the UFC after the stint in Eagle FC. Yep. Eagle FC. Eagle what do you reckon is happening there? Nothing. It went bankrupt, didn't it? Did it? Yeah, I think it's done. I I did have a look here. I know it hasn't had an event for. Is this this was a um, Khabib funded um, mm. venture, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's it's done. Like they they did a few events and that was it. So the last one. Okay. Oh, so it's been 18 months since I've had one. Yeah. Okay. Does it say anything about it? No, it doesn't. Okay, disregard that. So Eagle FC. I always thought that was questionable. Yep. Okay, he was 7-0 when he started in the UFC, uh, 7-2 in the UFC, which is good. Fought for the interim belt against Tony. Tony. Yeah. I remember, did Tony rear naked? He subbed him. I'm pretty sure it was triangle. Oh, okay. And I uh, went for the interim belt, then went 2-5, and five, three sub losses. I watched the fight the other day with him and Diego Sanchez mm. in Eagle FC. Oh, did, you, did you see it? No, I never watched it. It's, they both looked, Kevin Lee looked so slow. He looked like he looked like an old guy. He looked like. Do you remember when Tyson came back and fought Roy Jones Jr. a yeah. couple of years back? Yep. It looked that compared to how he used to be. He just looked so slow. That's like, not good. I don't know what it is. He's still young. What's going on? He. I think. Ke- I don't mind Kevin Lee. Mm. I'll be honest. Uh, I. I despised him after what he did to Gregor Gillespie because everyone knows how I feel about Gregor. Mm. It's still our profile pic on our social media. It's yeah, Gregor wearing it's a, our shirt. It's a claim. He, he did wear our shirt. Everyone says Photoshop. It's not Photoshop. Yeah. He wore the shirt. He just denied it. Thanks, Gregor. <laughs> I said he looked horrible against Diego. He hasn't fought in so long. Yeah. Has he? It's been ages. Let's have a look. Well, up. if Eagle FC was his last thing, January 2022. Yeah, yeah. It is. So it's really... Oh, March, sorry. So his last uh, loss that was in I'm talking about UFC was um, 2021. Just two years. It's been a while. Wow. I didn't even I could don't even remember him fighting Daniel Rodriguez. For Charles Oliveira. What was it a triangle that he lost to? Where are we? Oh, so sorry, a triangle it was guillotine. Choke. Guillotine no. against. Oh, uh, it was Charles triangle choke. And then Tony. Yeah, triangle. that's right. He's not great on the ground. Nah. Okay, he's up against Rinat. Now Rinat, this guy here. He just looks like a terrifying man. Imagine facing that guy. 
20 and 1. He looks good. He's. I went through his opponents because you know how they're often like yeah. pies. No. Nah. He's, he's got actually, qual- he's got quality opponents. Oh, cool! I know. So he is <laughs> he's looking good. He's two and zero in the UFC. Both decisions, both over BJJ guys as well. So he's he's good. I mean, what's he got? So he's got eleven knockouts and th- five subs, four yep. decisions. He's lost one on decision. That was ages ago, wasn't it? Mm. That's was his second fight back in when was that? 20, so ten years ago. Jesus Christ! Oh, wow. So his last loss was ten years ago. Yeah. I don't know. He's good on the ground, but he's got better hands. Kevin Lee, he's had two years. He can get a lot better on the ground in two years. I think Kevin Lee may have thought to himself, the only way I'm losing is by sub. Yeah. I'm going to have to improve my ground game. Yep. But he is lightning quick. Well, he was lightning quick mm. with his hands. Yeah. Hopefully this stays on the feet. If it stays on the feet, Kevin Lee's a red hot chance. Yep. Should we get some odds? Yeah. Oh, did you bring your... I, can, I didn't bring, oh, the, you bring didn't that up. laptop. You bring but. that up. I'm going to go with uh, Rinat um, as the favourite. <coughs> I'm going to go him at mm. about a dollar fifty, yeah. And Kevin Lee at about two bucks eighty three. You're not far off. Tell me. Uh, Tell me. So Rinat is. I feel like it's that's not how we say his name, but it's one forty five, so only five cents off. Yeah. And Kevin two seventy six, so only four cents off that one. I said eighty three. Oh, eighty. It's about seven. Anyway, it's oh, not sorry, the point. I thought you said eighty. I'm still tipping Kevin Lee in this one. Really, I am. No, I don't know. I feel like that that Russian dude looks. He looks terrible. I've never seen him before. No, he has. Uh, he's got two UFC wins, mm. but I think both of them. Where's his thing? Who's he got up against? He's got up against. He, I mean, he he went f- uh, three rounds with Brian Battle. What? Yeah. I think he handed. Did he hand Brian Battle his first loss? I think it must have been. Wow, I oh, obviously just loss. wasn't paying attention because I've been following Brian Battle for a bit now. Yeah, I watched him on the Ultimate Fighter. He's as well. so good, isn't he? He's awesome. I love. He's him. a great guy. That win against Gabriel Green was brilliant. Yeah, that was so good. <laughs> I don't know what Gabe Green was doing, but yeah. Anyhow, this guy's good. He can match it on the ground. He's I've I've seen him. He's got very good takedown defense. He um, when he's on the ground, he just he seems to be able to protect himself. I don't think Kevin Lee's going to even consider taking this one to the ground so yeah but my thing with Kevin Lee he, his biggest downfall is his fight IQ is is just not no. up to par like started off well in the UFC but then when he went up against like the top dogs who like Tony Ferguson who you know he gets violent and he takes a lot of damage but he's got a high fight IQ for the most part mm. Kevin starts to struggle there you know and I feel like this guy knows what he's doing so I don't I don't like Kevin's chances in this I won't be tipping Kevin. I think Kevin, after that knockout of Gregor, he just his confidence went through the roof, and he yeah. thought he was untouchable. Yeah. Anyway, I'm still going to go Kevin Lee. Fair enough. My multi's going to be juicy. All right, main card. Uh, we're going to kick over. The, forget the first two because there was nothing too entertaining. Lipsky, she's a Michael Johnson of the strawweight division, I believe. <laughs> Four and five in the US. She is, mate. If you have a look, who she's beaten and who she's lost to. Let's have a look here. Okay, so she's beaten Mandy Bomb and JJ Aldrich, which aren't too bad. She's yep. she's lost to the cheat, Priscilla Cachuera, yep. biggest cheat in the UFC, everyone, which I, I like her. Uh, De La Rosa, she's lost to, she's lost to Antonio Shevchenko. Yep. Jesus. <laughs> she's lost to Meatball McCann and Joanne Calderwood, which is now Joanne Wood. Yep. That still was a bit weird. She married someone with last name Wood. Yes. And then she's got wins over uh, Carolina. That Mandy Bomb one, that where I thought she did very well mm. against there. See, so she's 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 she, careful. She's an old um, what's it called? KSW, mm. KSW, KSW women. And to be a champ at KSW in that Polsky league, yeah, you got to be a good fighter. Yeah, I don't know. She's up against Melissa Gato. Um, she's supposed to make. Oh, this girl's the king of pullouts. She's the Ron Jeremy of the um, <laughs> women's strawweight division. Oh my god. She's supposed to make okay. This is this is how bad they signed her. She's supposed to make a debut debut at UFC two thirty seven yeah. when Andraj slammed and uh, Rose. beat Rose and yeah. won the title. She pulled out a couple of times. She failed drug test. Suspended. Two years later, she deb- so she was supposed to debut when Rose lost. Yeah, and she debuted when Lewis and um, Cyril Garn were fighting for the interim. Oh title. my god! So two sixty five. <laughs> so Jesus. It was, so it's almost thirty. Pay per views in between, <laughs> so she spent some time out. Damn, 
Have we got some odds for this one? Because yeah. this one will be quite. I'm going to say that Lipsky's the favourite by a, by a bit. Like not a, not like maybe dollar eighty to two thirty. Mm. What do we got? So Lipsky's the underdog. Oh Jesus! Two dollars sixty two. It's pretty pretty significant. And Gato is a dollar fifty. Lipsky, you just can't. She's. Too unpredictable. There's just there seems to be more and more fighters yeah. that are too unpredictable. But that's the thing. Just even just women's MMA in general, unless it's like Nunes, which you know even she had that loss to Pena, or Shevchenko, who obviously lost to Grasso. Unless it's those top tier, like those two women, the rest it is all fair game. Like I, I it is so hard to pick who wins in women's MMA, especially when they go to decision. Mm. When they go to decision, I can never tell who's about to win. Because they can take them down mm. and then no one gets up and no one does any damage. And it's just like... It's just, it's just a different fight. It's hard to tell. I love watching it, but... Yeah. They just need finishers. They need more yeah. people who can finish, whether it's just someone... Tatiana Suarez? Oh, dude, she's a beast, hey? Did I say? Yeah. Did I she's say? She's a beast. She's, she's got a fight coming up as well. Her, um, Michael, I still believe she'll have the belt. I said at the end of 2022. I already said at the end of 2023 now she's got the belt. Uh, I predicted uh, Marvin Vittori to have the belt at the end of this year as well. Yeah, you're. I don't know what you were on. Oh. You're on your, that, that knee medication or whatever. <laughs> those service station dick pills. I think I was on. <laughs> Some of those John, you and John Jones. Jones yeah. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm going to go Lipsky. I think she's too unpredictable. If I pick against her, I'm going to spit the dummy. Wait, yeah. It's getting warm in here, isn't it? Well, what's, what's uh, Melissa's record looking like okay. these days. Let's have a look here. Let's have her, a look. her name is Melissa Cat. Gatto is Cat in Italian. Is it? Yeah. Okay, so she has come in. What she got? She got three fights in the UFC. Two finishes, Sarah Eubanks. She's not easy to finish. Mm. Uh, Victoria Leonardo, she's not great. Yeah, she, she lost, lost to Tracy it. Cortez. Yeah. When was that? That was, oh, geez, that's 12 months ago. Brian Ortega's misses. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Lipsky. I think she's been a bit more active probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to pick Lipsky for now, for sure. You're going to go Lipsky? Yeah. I so, love that underdog money as well. That's, that's, that's some great money. Oh, with Kevin Lane. It's yeah. beautiful. Next up, oh, this guy here. He's a new fan favorite, and I like him. And I've been on I've been on the Max Payne Griffin yeah. train for a, for a long time. When he, when he was losing, when everyone was jumping off, I was jumping off. Do you know he follows me on Instagram? Yeah, I know. Yeah. How good's that? I don't know why. Good on it. I did message him, actually. Let's have a look, see if he's messaged me back. Eric Gonzalez, the ghost pepper. Oh, I'd love to see him back. He's got to do something, though. Where are we? Oh, Jesus. Hang on. There we go. I wonder if I'm in that photo. Odyssey Jiu-Jitsu. Mm. People like everyone. Odyssey Jiu-Jitsu. Make your way down. We're growing, hey? Has he messaged me back? No, he hasn't. That. Okay. Oh, well, that's all right. He's got other things on his mind, like mm. a big fight this weekend. <laughs> Max Griffin. Confidence is at an all-time high yep. with Max Griffin. He is outstanding. Seven and seven in the UFC. Yeah. Okay, but he's won four of his last five. He's got a split loss. As much as I like to say he won that fight, I still reckon Magny won that fight. He's yeah. got a split loss to Magny. And That's the last fight. There's no shame in losing to Magny. He's, no. He's legit. He's only been stopped once. This is We're talking about Max Payne Griffin here. Mm. And he got stopped in his UFC debut at Colby Covington. Really? Now, this one here... <laughs> Um, uh, the one against Colby, he just got taken down and he just couldn't get up. And Colby pretty much just held his arm down and was on his back and then was punching. Wasn't doing too much damage, but it was a fair stoppage. It was just, it was over, but right. it definitely wasn't a knockout. He's been on this run. The best thing that he did, do you remember when he exploded the ear of Ramiz Brahimi? Brahiman. Okay, <laughs> I've got a video footage of it here. Let's have a look. Oh, volume here. I remember this. This here, I mean, I've seen this video a thousand times, mm. but oh, oh my god, that is just a horrific ear injury. Look at it just flapping. God. You can he like he wobbled quite a bit after that. His equilibrium would have been off quite a bit. Oh, oh god, he can feel it. Oh. Oh. oh, I forgot how bad this was. Do you remember back when they used to do this when COVID was on and mm. they did it in front of no people? Yeah. That was horrible. That was a horrible time for sport in general. Remember the NBA during that? 
That's a horrible time. Oh yeah, they were in the bubble. That was I I kind of I kind of enjoyed it to be honest. Like even the UFC like the fact that they still put on fights. Oh yeah. Amazing. That was so no one else did that. That's incredible to me. Are there any covid restrictions anymore? Not really in WA, no. Nah. No, anywhere. Yeah. Everyone's like, oh, everyone gets COVID. Yeah. Just, 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 just shrug it off. Do you know all those um, COVID tests expire in August? There's like, there's like four... What, the rat test? There's like four billion of them. I've got a box around here. No, there's about four billion of those that haven't been used. Oh, it's <laughs> a great investment there, WA government. Thank yeah. you. <sighs> How about a pay rise for the nurses? All right. Yeah, tell me about it. All right. Um, so since that, since he exploded his ear, that's when the confidence went up. That's when everyone started knowing who he was. Yep. Good on him. He's up against Moraes. Okay, this 23-year-old Ecuadorian, 14-0 with 11, 11 KOs. Insane. He's had three UFC fights. That includes the Dana White Contender Series. He's another one. I've gone through all his old opponents, and they're all – Easily majority of them are plus a fifty percent wins. Nice. So he's had good fighters the whole the whole time. He's only twenty three. When he comes in though, his hands are so low. Yeah. His hands are so low. He's got three inch reach. He sets up these he's got good leg kicks. And he just sets up these leg kicks and then jab. His jab seems to be dropping a lot of people. So he's obviously got power. Wow. He's open to the counter. Now, I'm going to go Max Payne Griffin here. Absolutely no question. Because uh, he follows you on Instagram. Pretty much. And I said I was going to. Uh, have we got some odds here? If Max Payne Griffin is not the favourite, dump the house on it. <laughs> oh, my God. What's Max Mac, Payne? It's 289. For Max Griffin. Max Griffin. Bet the house on it, people. Max Payne Griffin is going to get it done. That is a lot of value. And I'll tell you why. Max Payne Griffin is going to counter him. His hands are too low. I think Max is too smart and he's been around for too long. I think Max is – there's a chance he's going to get rocked. I think Max has got a good chin on him. Yep. I think due to, due to his hands and due to being so low, I'm talking about on Morales here, and um, Max just being smart, having the higher fight IQ, I think Max is going to counter – Yep. I think Max is going to probably cop a few leg kicks, a few jabs, but I reckon Max is going to hmm. unload on him and then just – I reckon Max is going to put him out probably round two. Yeah. Okay, KO, how, how are we looking for odds? KO round two. KO round two. Has it gone into – No, they don't have those yet. markets yet. Too early. Yeah. Too early. I, I'm, I'm going to go with you on this. I, I do think Max's experience will probably play a massive part. Max Payne Griffin. Yeah, I reckon he's going to be the first to probably finish Michael Morales. <sighs> That'd be that'd be pretty handy. Mm. I mean, Max is pretty popular at the moment, and to finish an unbeaten Ecuadorian, yeah. you know, up and comer, that'd be great. And to finish him in like spectacular fashion, which I'm sure Max Payne, Max, do that for me, and then dedicate it to the Greco Republic. Can you imagine if he gets on the oh, mic? Could you imagine a UFC fighter? Like after getting like interviewed by Joe Rogan's like shout out to the Grelka Republic. If he does, Max Griffin, I'm gonna send this out to you. If you shout out to the Grelka Republic, we're gonna do an intro for every episode with you shouting out to the Grelka yeah. Republic. I wonder how many people message him being like, Hey, if you give us a shout out Oh no, nah, everyone. No, don't do that, Max. Just do what you just get the win, Max. That's all I really care about. Yeah. Nice. Reverse should psychology. Get, should get Lockjaw to send us send us one. Oh, he would. Lockjaw's awesome, man. Lockjaw's great. Oh, you know what? Tell me. This is so bad. Tell me. So, just real quick. So, um, obviously, Lockjaw won the belt. In Perth? And who did he beat? He beat Rod Costa, right? Rod Costa has a uh, jiu-jitsu gym in Perth called Costa's, yeah. and it's huge. B- big gym. They haven't been open well, probably just over a year, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, they've been around for a little while, and um, they have another gym. Uh, not too far from them called Wilkes, which has been around forever. And that's where Steve Erseg is okay. trains, right? So um, the day Steve Erseg won his UFC debut oh, a couple a, weeks what ago. what a great win that was. That was amazing. So right? good. He was a big underdog as well. He was yeah. about 2 bucks 80 Yeah, because yeah, he came in eight days' notice against a guy who was ranked mm. in, in the top 10, I believe. Wow, um, good on you, Erseg. Incredible. So I messaged this group chat I'm in. With like all my mates that do jiu-jitsu. Um, forgetting that they joined Costas and they used to be at Wilkes, right? Are they rival gyms or the same gym? There's no real rivalry, but from what I've been told from people who go to both, um, when Costas opened up, a lot of Wilkes clientele went over to Costas. Okay. Because Rod Costa got his black belt from um, Felipe, uh, Felipe Pena, who's like one of the, I'm pretty sure it was Felipe, one of the best jiu-jitsu black belts in the world right now, yeah. right? So there's a lot of credibility there. So a lot of Wilkes clientele um, went from Wilkes to Costas. 
So it, I don't think there's an actual rivalry. Mm. Um, I don't yeah. know because I'm not in those. We gyms. should start it. We should start let's shit. Do it. Oh, yeah. let's do it. Um, I'm not in those gyms, so I don't actually know. But you know, I can see why there would be a bit of salt in the wounds there. Oh right? yeah. yeah. Anyway, I messaged this group chat when Steve won. I was like, boys, like Steve did it. What a fucking legend, you know, going crazy. Forgetting that they're not at Wilkes anymore. They're at Costas and Steve is from Wilkes and they used to train with Steve, right? Yeah. And that's like, oh, damn, I forgot that they don't do that anymore. Whatever, that's not a big deal. And then I realized that their coach, Rod Costa, got knocked out that same night. <laughs> so, by, by, by Lockjaw. So not only did their old coach, like a trading partner win yeah. who they left their but coach. their coach now got knocked out cold on the same night how did he knock it? Oh, <laughs> like I felt on. horrible and they all left me on scene none of them responded to me <laughs> I was like oh come on guys you can be happy like come on you gotta support people Jesus don't just yeah. cut people down that's our job <laughs> Anyway, Odyssey Jiu Jitsu is better than all the other gyms. Odyssey Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> Lake, Discovery Drive, I think it's called. Well, it's down there. It's down there. It's also near. What's the other place you train down there? Uh, v Athletic. V Athletic, that's yeah. the one. It's great. Great, great place down anyway, Bibber Lake. It's sorry. happening down there. Quick little tangent. Is there anything north of the river? There's heaps. Most of it's north of the river. Really? Okay, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, well, as you can see, I'm not big on BJJ, so I have zero idea what's going on. <laughs> Okay, anyway, so we're through that one. We're going Max Payne Griffin. Demir Uzmagulov versus Grant Dawson. Okay, Demir, he was on a 19-fight win streak. 19. Huge. It's not bad. Uh, he lost uh, December last year to Sarukian. Yep. Uh, he retired after that. Tell me, does he look like Mongi? <laughs> oh, God. Let's have a look. Yeah, let's go, Demir. Ah, uh, Jesus Christ. One of our mates, Mongi, he looks at – oh, Jesus, what have I done here? Okay, we're all over this here. Can't you just press on his name? No, nah, it won't actually do that. Okay, so there we go. Got a bit of Mongi about him. He I does thought. look like Mongi. Does look like <laughs> Mongi. Mongi, I'm going to call Mongi Demir from I, now I'm on. I'm pretty sure that is Mongi. <laughs> <laughs> Mongi's does. in the UFC. Mongi. Jesus, he goes from training at counterbalance to the <laughs> UFC. <laughs> okay, this, this fight here, this fight here is the hardest to pick on the night. It all comes down to Demir. Demir lost. He was 19 fight win streak. I think he's only 32. Yeah, he's 32. Okay, he's 24 and 2 all up. So he's got a beautiful record. Awesome. Okay. Fought Sarukian and then retired. Went, no, nah, I don't want to fight anymore. And the UFC turned around and said, you've got one fight left on your contract. So there's obviously something if you break a contract, you've got to pay. So yeah. he's gone... He's hummed and hard. He's finally gone, all right, I'll just fight. I'll fight anyone mm. just to get this last fight out of the way. Yep. Now, I think there's so many things that Demir could be doing here. He could be retiring because he's 32. He's had 26 pro fights and he wants to give it away. Yep. He looks older than 32, by the way. He could be looking to possibly get a new UFC contract. I think he's looking to go to another organization. You reckon? I think. I think, I think he's too good. And he's too young, and I've seen some footage of him training, like recent footage, and he's not mucking around. But there's just too many. Um, I said there may be Eagle FC. I meant to say Bellator there. Um, mm, there's yeah. too many. There's too many variables with what Demir comes in. If he comes in, the old Demir, I reckon, I think he's going to win. But if he comes in, is he just trying to get this last fight? out of the way. If he comes in, he's known for missing weight. Is he going to come in, miss weight, put on a lackluster performance, yeah. and then just say, just almost like going protective. But remember Mark Hunt's last fight yeah, against he Brock? he didn't care anymore. He, it wasn't against Mark, uh, Brock, it was against someone else, but he um, just didn't care. Yeah. So is Demir, the fact that he's gone in and said, yep, yeah, fine, I'll fight anyone yeah. just to finish the contract. Yeah. If his heart's not in it, he just might go into survival yeah. mode. And like against Dawson, you can't really... Like, you've got to pay attention. You've got to have a good camp. Like, Dawson, you can't really mess nah. with, you know? Dawson's 8-0. Yeah. No, yeah. Uh, and he's got one draw. I did watch that draw against Ricky Glenn. Do you remember that? Oh, I know he fought Ricky, but I can't remember the fight. Ricky won the first two rounds, clearly. Yeah. And Dawson um, won the third, convinc okay. convincingly. Yeah. I've got the scorecards right here. Mm. Look who's surprising this <laughs> How is he consistently so Chris bad? Chris Lee, okay, it was not a 10 8 round. No. So Chris Lee gave um, Ricky Glenn clearly won the first two. I don't think there was. Uh, hang on. Sorry. 
I had it the other way around. Sorry. Grant Dawson won the, won first, the first two. Sorry, I had that the wrong way. Now, Ricky Glenn came in and dominated the third round, like made a late charge, a couple of submission attempts, and he gave him. It wasn't a 10 8. Now, Grant Dawson should have won this fight, 29 28. Yeah. But two judges, Ron McCarthy, questionable. Chris Lee, we all know how. Chris Lee in the building. We all know how everyone feels about Chris Lee. Especially so, Alec. Chris Lee. And Ron McCarthy's not much better. Can you imagine if Sal D'Amato Who was the young? hell is Ron McCarthy? <laughs> He's another questionable judge. Who gets these judges? Is it the the UFC obviously don't. It's the commission, isn't it? Yeah, apparently. It must be. Uh, I don't know. Come on. The UFC is huge. They've got to have some influence but over these judges. They have to. There's no way that it's like... I don't know. There's so much money being thrown around here. You're telling me the commission is not influenced by that a little bit? If Paddy Pimblett versus fucking, what was his name? Um, Gordon. Yeah, come on. There, there's no way that the, that was just the judges. There's no way. I feel like the UFC were involved in that. Some some uh, judges let the crowd get involved more, though. Yeah, yeah, true. I don't know. I'm, I just don't think. If the UFC could pick their own judges, though, that would be very controversial. Yeah. Yeah. Then there'd be some, some dodgy. I true. mean, this is probably a way they can say... You know, well, it wasn't up to us. Yeah, our hands are clean. Yeah. Maybe they're not. I don't know. But don't know. Douglas Crosby, whoever that is, he had it right. He had it right. That was fair. I, it, was not a, it was not a 10-8 that last round. Mm. Anyway, I don't know who I'm going to pick. Have we got some odds for this? Yeah, Dawson's the underdog again. So $2.07. Demir is $1.79. I think Demir is a better fighter, but I think Demir could easily protect himself and get subbed. Yeah. Dawson's well. good. You can't. I, I'm going to go Dawson on this one. So am I. Because underdog central. Right, how confident it? can you be in someone retiring and then being like, "Oh crap, I got one more." Fight. One more. We'll go one more. You know, one like, more. Yeah. Main event: Magomed versus Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland back at middleweight. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, back at middleweight. Where is it? Only one fight over. I can't even. I don't even know what I've read, written there. Hasn't he always been middleweight? No, he went up to light heavyweight to fight um, Ivanov just recently, start of the year. Remember he went I up? I thought Ivanov was a middleweight. No, light heavyweight. Oh, what the hell? Why did they fight at light heavyweight? I don't know. Oh, he replaced Gastelum. Ah, uh, okay. Because right. Gastelum went up. That's right. Okay. Okay, no worries. Anyway, so what have we got here? Back in middleweight. I don't even know what I've done here. Oh, okay, this is Magomed. Magomed, um, oh, what have I done here? I don't even know. So, I don't know. Magomed... Oh, no, wait. I don't know what I've written there. Wait, wait let me read this. I d- no, this makes absolutely no, no sense. No, okay, I think you're talking about Magomed here. I am talking about Magomed. So, only one... So, Sean's back at middleweight, but Magomed's only got one UFC fight over Stolf's foots. I don't know how to say that last name. That's that's a bit crazy. Let me just let me just get this guy's record up, because yeah. I've obviously tried to do too much this morning, and <laughs> I haven't been able to do it. Let's have a look at Magomed. Oh, big boy. Damn, he's a beast. Okay, right. so... Yeah, here we go. Ah, here we go. Okay, so he's only got one UFC fight, yeah. and that was against Stolzfuss. Stolzfuss. Yeah, yeah, which was good. That was the front kick. Yeah. That was right. That. that was right. And he, he beat him. That was So that was, what was that, like nine months ago? Yeah. His other fighters there, it's still one UFC fight against an unranked fighter, and now you're the main event. Yeah, it's... But I think, wait, if you go into his record again, go yeah. down. There. What are we looking I at? I feel here? like there should be. There was a win over someone, I thought, that was like quite notable. Uh, never mind. I think I'm wrong. Anyway, don't worry about it. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I don't really understand how this has happened then. How is he a main event? I know uh-huh. Sean's, he's versing Sean, but how is he even versing Sean? Did he, he no one pulled out of a main event here? We should know this. Jesus, we haven't done much research today. Should we? <laughs> like it's Hang on, here we there's go. There's so much happening all the time. No, that's it. It's always been Strickling. It's a good poster, by the way. Great poster. Oh, we've got some more posters here for 290. Thank you, Dana Zavora. I'm just wondering what the storyline is here for, like, Magomedov. One fight the UFC knows versus Sean Strickland. I don't get it. I don't know. Maybe they're trying to rush him because if he if he beats Strickland, he's going to be probably straight into the rankings, maybe at fifteen or something. I know there was one guy that fought Hamzat in the past, and he was the only person to knock out Hamzat. And now that guy's in the UFC, and he's got a fight coming up. 
Oh, okay. So you think something that's happened previously mm. has got him this fight? Yeah, I'm not too sure. But this must not be the right person. I can't see. I can't see any big names that he's beaten in there. Can you? I can't see a nah, thing. I must have been thinking of someone else. No, he's got nothing there. Anyway, anyway Sean's. Matter. What are the okay? So this here, um, I reckon. Obviously, um, Mag- um, Magomedov is. Um, 14 KOs, Jesus Christ, he's good with his hands, isn't he? He's very good. And Strickland's got a chin, and Strickland likes to fight. Do you reckon Strickland will take it to the ground? No, no, Strickland won't take it to the ground. Um, He's been training with Alex Pereira. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, and And he was saying how he didn't realise how bad his footwork was. Yeah. Which is pretty incredible. Like, if you think about some of the wins Sean has and his record in general, the fact that you have bad footwork, which anyone could see... But you made it that far. That's pretty impressive. He just lumbers forward, doesn't yeah, he? He just doesn't he stands, stop walking forward. Just stands really square, very yeah. chatty. But there's fighters you can't do that against, and it looks like Magomedov probably is not the right fighter. No. But if you're working with Pereira, though, and you're learning footwork from him, how much of an improvement can you make, you know? Yeah. And it's pretty good that those two are training together, considering that yeah. Pereira did knock him out. Yeah. That was great. That's that was that was the best feeling ever, seeing Sean get knocked out. You don't like Sean? I hate Sean. Really? I hate him. He's so annoying. I just I find him very funny. He's hilarious, but I, it's just there's something about his voice, the way he talks. You know, he sounds like that guy from Star Wars. You know, the one that's like Air Kenobi. No, <laughs> the guy that's like I've never the seen. I've never seen Star oh, Wars. Oh come on, bro. I've never seen it. He's like a merchant. Not a child. That's why. Can, Probably because I'm an adult. He's, let, me Star Wars. Up, let me get you some. Hang on. I say I'm not a child and I just bought a UFC belt. Yeah. And I've got Grow Good Chicken sitting over there and on the you corner. Bought, you bought a car. like One of those little cars. It's an RC car. It's great. <laughs> All right. Are you getting Sean Strickland here? Sean Strickland. I think Sean Strickland's all, he's entertaining enough to always draw a crowd. So if he loses this... And Mag, I mean, he's going to say, well, he lost to an undefeated fighter here. So what are, we, what are you doing there? Not undefeated fighter, 14 KOs. So I don't think it's going to hurt. If Sean loses this, I don't think it's going to hurt his his reputation or yeah. I think he's, he's always going to be that guy that sits between yeah. five and ten, who, who wins a couple, loses a couple. It's because he's so vocal. Like, oh. Sean will always sort of be up there. And he's got a great record. What, is he 20 and, like, got, three? or He's got an excellent five, record. Yeah. What is he? He's twenty six and five. Yeah, well he's only lost what's he lost? Four in the UFC, five in the UFC. That's still That's a good. decent. You have a look, he's beaten Jotko, Uriah Hall, ba- Jack Hermanson. All right, here we go. The win over Imanov recently in January was pretty good. What are you getting here? This is Sean Strickland. <laughs> Sounds like South Park. Wait right there. Ready? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on. Talk. This is the longest. That's Sean Strickland. (laughs) That's how Sean Strickland talks. Hear that voice he's got. That is Sean Strickland. He looks like he doesn't take it seriously. That's the issue. Yeah. Maybe he does. Maybe it's just an act. Have you seen his interviews with like the, the Asian reporter? No. Oh, it's so funny. He's so, he makes the most racist jokes. Ever, <laughs> oh. but she just loves it. Like she laughs her ass off. It's it's awesome. <laughs> How can some people get away with that kind of stuff and other people not? He just doesn't care. You I can't. He's one of those people. You just you won't be able to cancel. Like, no, doesn't matter what he does. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, that's it. So that's the end of the card. So who are you backing for this one? We got some odds. Did we get some odds on this one? No, Let's give me uh, some odds. So uh, Sean Strickland's a favorite. Two uh, one fifty three and. Uh, Abus Magomedov is 251. I'm going to... Oh, I hate to say it. I'm going to go Magomedov. Yeah. It's underdog city today it for is. you, isn't it? Yeah, for, for both of us. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm going to go Sean Strickland on this one. Yeah, that might change. I might change it. I don't know. But oh, it wouldn't yeah. surprise me. Yeah. Halfway through our tip, so you can hang on to that belt. Stop being so That's rude. a glorious belt, isn't it? Yeah, dude, it's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm going to go Magomedov. I, I feel like I don't really know what to expect too much, but he's Russian, so he's obviously really good at wrestling. And I feel like Sean doesn't really stand much of a chance against a good wrestler. So It's a big call. Yeah. All right, that's it. 
Okay, that's it for this weekend's fight night. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Magic Spoon. Donors of Aura from Foxtel. Magic Once Spoon. again, Lockjaw. Manscaped. Come on. Manscaped. Where's Mac- the sponsorship? Max Payne Griffin. Get it done, son. Mm. Uh, who else? Uh, Ghost Pepper. Sorry, the UFC. I'll let you go. That PCR. broke my heart. PCR. What else? Um, Greg or Gillespie, when are you fighting again? He's when- not. He's out the UFC, man. Are you sure? Yeah, he got cut ages ago. He did not. He did. Look he it up. He did not. He did not. I'm going to look up that once we get off. Okay. Okay, that's it, everyone. Thanks. Uh, like and subscribe. Should say that at the start. We don't. Yeah. And we'll see you back for 290. Thanks, everyone.